Hello, welcome back to another episode of Embracing Abundance, the podcast where we dive deep into the things that shape our everyday lives, our health, our happiness, and today we're going to be diving into the topic of money. So I'm Peyton, for those who are new here, and I started this podcast to help women like you find balance, joy, and empowerment in all aspects of life. So while this is primarily a health podcast, I think money and how we approach money can actually have a huge impact on our well-being and having a good money mindset can help us attract even more of it in our lives. So this episode is here to offer perspective, tips, and a mindset shift that could change your relationship with money and ultimately your actions and outcomes. We first need to understand that there are two mindsets when it comes to money, a scarcity mindset and an abundance mindset. The scarcity mindset is deeply embedded in fear and limitation. If you're constantly worrying about the next paycheck, the future seems uncertain, and there's this lingering fear that you'll never have enough, whether it is money or if it's something different like opportunities or success, you're working with a scarcity mindset. How we think about money deeply influences how we handle it, and if you're always in fear of losing money, chances are you might miss out on opportunities to grow it because you're holding on to it. Studies, including one from the University of Cambridge, reveal that a scarcity mindset can significantly alter our brain's decision-making processes, influencing whether we play it safe or take a chance. It's okay to be aware of expenses and obviously not go out and spend what we don't have or rack up a bunch of debt, but this mindset is about being so focused on what we don't have that we ignore the potential of what we could have. A lot of this stems from our upbringing, our past financial traumas, or society and society pressures. I grew up hearing phrases like, money doesn't grow on trees, or you have to save every penny because you never know what tomorrow will bring from close family, friends, teachers, and also society. And while these seem practical, they can also instill a deep-seated fear of financial insecurity within our lives. And if we don't break this mindset and we don't shift this mindset, we're constantly going to be acting from a place of fear. And living with this scarcity mindset doesn't just affect your wallet, it affects your overall well-being and it can lead to constant stress, anxiety, worry, and even prevent you from enjoying the fruits of your hard work. You know, imagine finally going on that vacation that you saved up for, but instead of enjoying it, you're just worried about every dime you're spending. And that's a scarcity mindset in action. It's robbing you of the joy of the moment. Another way to view it is imagine yourself in a grocery store, you're deciding on if you should spend more money to eat healthy and fill your body with nutrients and things that will influence your well-being, or save that 50 bucks and go for the processed food with a longer shelf life simply because you didn't want to spend that extra money. Yes, you're trying to save as much money as possible, but at the same time, you're also not valuing your health and your body. Therefore, your health declines because it's not getting food in its natural form, which then affects your mood and your gut and your hormones, and that just makes it harder to feel healthy and fit, which then might affect your confidence and your relationship and maybe even your work. You know, it just kind of snowballs from there. But when we view money as a value exchange, I'm spending an extra $50 on food that will benefit me we can see that we shouldn't be afraid to spend that extra money because you're not losing that money. You get that return back in food that is just as valuable to you. And through time, if we start to accept that money comes and goes, but it's always there, it's not something to fear that we won't have, we can start to let go of that stress that comes from not having enough. So what can we do about this mindset? How can we change this? The first step is awareness. Recognizing this mindset is crucial because only then can we actually begin to challenge and change that mindset. We need to question the beliefs we have about money and understand that opportunities to earn more and grow what we have are out there. They are possible. So this brings me to the second mindset, which is called the abundance mindset. And this mindset is very powerful and can be life-changing in more ways than just putting more cash into your wallet. When you have an abundance mindset, you're focusing on the possibilities in your life and what you can achieve. You see opportunities for growth and believe in your ability to create more money for yourself. You're not afraid you're going to lose it. Instead, you use it to help you grow, whether that's growing your skills, your education, or starting a business, investing in ETFs and putting money into a Roth IRA, or investing in a mentorship program or in a coach to guide you in your fitness journey, 
you see your potential, you see the opportunities, and you use money as a resource to exchange that value for a different kind of value, which can then help you earn more money, more success, or more life satisfaction. So switching your thoughts to, I need to save every penny because I don't want to run out of money, to there's enough money in this world for everyone and I can take financial risks in pursuit of my goals can help you go after what you want. It's about not letting the fear of losing money hold you back from your dream business, your dream career, or the impact that you can create in this world. I'll give you guys an example from my life and I'm going to be completely transparent. I used to be scared of sharing information about money because growing up it was something that you just don't talk about and you don't really share, but I've learned that sharing experiences and tips can help you, especially in the context of what our goal from this podcast is. It's to help you learn tips and mindset tricks so that you can experience big wins and amazing outcomes yourself. So what I'm about to share with you is in no way to gloat, but it's in every way to share that this works, this is real, and I myself have seen the power of embracing an abundance mindset. Going into college back in 2018, I was 100% in a scarcity mindset. I was paying for school pretty much on my own, racking up debt in federal and private student loans, using loans to pay for rent, counting pennies with groceries, which all of that was expected. I mean, I was the stereotypical broke college kid, but anytime I did have spare change, the last thing that I wanted to do was pay off debt, invest it, or give it away to my church. Because honestly, at that point, I wasn't sure if I would get more of it. But I did do that. I gave what I could to my church. I started to pay off my debt, and I did that slowly and when I could over the course of college. I graduated school in December of 2021 with virtually no money to my name and with, I think, like $30,000 or so in debt. And I then went all in on my business in January of 2022 with absolutely no idea if it was going to work or if I could even make $10,000 that year from it. I got my very first client that was separate from any commercial gym that I was working at, and it was at that moment that I recognized the opportunity that I had in front of me and the impact that I can make in this world. I tried for a while to do it on my own as far as running a business uh, without investing in any type of mentor or help, but I was definitely in way over my head. Um, By April, before the tax deadline, I maxed out 2021's Roth IRA. In May, I officially paid off my student loan debt. By July, I maxed out 2022's Roth IRA. And in August, I took the leap and I invested 15K into a business mentor, which then paid for itself in about 60 days. If I would have never switched my mindset, I would have never taken a risk on myself. I actually got offered a manager position to start postgrad at a gym that I was working at previously, and I turned it down because I truly believed in my potential and the impact that I can make on women everywhere. And I could have taken that job, and it would have been great. I still would have made an impact. I would have had a stable income. And even with that, I still could have had an abundance mindset, no doubt in my mind. Things would have been accomplished probably not as fast, but either way, taking that risk and believing in my potential was the best thing that I did for my life. I trusted God. I trusted his purpose for my life. And that purpose is different for everyone, of course. That's just what felt aligned in my life at the time. And when it came time to invest in a mentor, I could have seen that cost as a setback or an expense or something that I couldn't do because I needed to save all of my money. But instead, I saw it as an opportunity to grow, to make a bigger impact, to believe in my potential. And that money was a value exchange. I invested in myself to grow my skills, to have a better strategy, to save precious time, which is everyone's most valuable asset, and believe in my goals. And now I'm able to use my money to continue to grow and make a bigger impact and a bigger difference in so many women's lives. And it's truly incredible. And it means so much. So that's a little bit about my experience as far as when I switched from a scarcity mindset to an abundance mindset and how that has played out in my life. Again, every person's life is different. Everyone has a different purpose. Not everyone is meant to run a business or do separate things. You really have to find what you want out of life. You have to define those goals and then align your financial goals and the abundance mindset with that. Now that we have discussed the two types of mindsets you can have, I do believe it's important to find a middle ground with a balance of risk-taking and also financial planning. For me, yes, I want to use my money to invest in skills and my future, but also we do need money to live, to buy food, rent, emergencies, and then we also want to go on vacations. We, We want to save up for a house or just the miscellaneous things that bring us joy. It's important to acknowledge the power of positive thinking and the potential for growth while also being grounded in the realities of our financial situation. And to find that balance, 
I'm actually going to save that for a future episode all on financial planning and strategy. And I'm going to try to get my husband to come on and talk about it because he nerds out on finance. And I think that he could be a really great help and a really great resource for you guys. So stay tuned because in the next few weeks, with or without him, we'll dive into a comprehensive strategy on how you can plan your finances around your goals, your aspirations, and your lifestyle needs and wants. If today's episode resonated with you, I'd love for you to share it with a friend or leave a review on Apple Podcasts. Your support means the world and helps us reach more women on their journey to empowerment. Thank you for tuning in and remember that you have the power to transform your mindset and in turn transform your life. So until next time, keep embracing abundance in all of its forms.